Waves are all around us and affect almost every aspect of our lives. For example, we sail on the ocean waves, talk to each other via sound waves, and see our family and friends and enemies with light waves. Our mobile phones use radio waves. The blood in our arteries and veins also propagates as waves. So understanding waves is central to an understanding of life and the universe. Waves can mutually interact. Only electromagnetic waves in the vacuum can pass through each other unchanged. Other waves modify each other when they meet. Where wave amplitudes become large enough, their interactions can produce what is called wave turbulence, and energy then flows easily from one wavelength to another. Usually, the wave energy flows in a cascade towards shorter and shorter wavelengths until, in the end, it gets dissipated, in other words, converted to heat. Wave turbulence crops up in diverse contexts, including, for example, astrophysics, oceanography and solid-state physics. It is believed to play a role in the creation of the giant rogue waves on the ocean that sometimes appear from nowhere and can overwhelm even the largest ships. So how does wave turbulence develop? A key approach to understanding its evolution lies in the concept of self-similarity. That is, representing the waves as a universal function of wave frequency and amplitude so that the process can be considered in terms of scale changes in frequency and amplitude. But so far there has been no experimental evidence for the self-similarity of an evolving wave system. Experiments are difficult, but in our paper we discuss how superfluid helium forms an ideal system for testing theories of the build-up of wave turbulence. The experiments make use of second sound, a temperature entropy wave that is unique to macroscopic quantum systems such as superfluid helium. Second sound is created by a harmonically driven heater in a resonant cavity containing superfluid helium. The corresponding temperature waves can be detected by a bolometer, a fast-acting thermometer. After the second sound is switched on, the standing wave amplitude grows continuously until nonlinear interactions lead to wave turbulence, and energy then starts to escape by cascading towards shorter wavelengths, where it can be dissipated. The development of this process is reflected in the generation of harmonics at multiples of the driving frequency. The signal recorded by the bolometer during the growth phase is therefore frequency analysed by computation of its power spectrum. We find that the initial growth rates of the harmonics correspond to a propagating front in frequency space, precisely as predicted by a theoretical description based on self-similarity. Although superfluid helium is a special material with unique properties, the essential physics underlying the evolution of its wave turbulence is just the same as in numerous other systems where experiments are far more difficult. We conclude that the self-similarity approach to the evolution of wave turbulence is correct. The many applications of this result include phonons in solids, nonlinear optical media, vibrating plates, surfaces of ferrofluids, oceanic waveguides, magnetic turbulence in interstellar gases, and shock waves in the solar wind.